Hi everyone, this is Sarah Russell, and today I'm going to be talking about um, getting started with your practice. Um, so one of the things that, that has really struck me over the years is, you know, for, first of all, when you get started, you have no idea how much of a struggle it is, and nobody really tells you. There's a lot of just secret struggling that people go through alone. Um, that just, you know, that we're not prepared for as practitioners and other practitioners don't necessarily share with each other. There's, it's kind of like, an, it's like the best kept secret in the industry or something. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about kind of, you know, that, that difficult um, getting started period, which is really, you know, it, it's, a, it's a slanted curve or a slanted kind of slope that starts out really high in the beginning. And it, you know, it evens out. Um, the, the, the sooner after you start, the more of a struggle it is. And slowly it starts going down. But you know, the first six months are really hard. Um, the, I, I, I um, you know, I opened my practice officially in the second half of 2013. 13. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going on my seventh, my eighth year. I've been in practice for seven full years. And um, my first six months, I, um, well, my first five months, I had a loss uh, of maybe $3,000, something like that. Um, so I didn't make anything. Um, and, and I lost money. Fortunately, I did not need to take out any kind of a loan. I did not go into debt. Um, I actually, I, at the time, um, I had um, a, a steady stream of unemployment income coming in. That was incredibly helpful to me as I was getting started because I had been laid off from an academic teaching job and I was in, in the process of, you know, transitioning my career to something different. Um, so this, it, it worked out really well for me. I was incredibly lucky. I realized not everybody starting out has that experience. So essentially, you know, I, I keep very careful track of my earnings and my unemployment compensation went up and down in accordance with what I was making, um, you know, as, as a self-employed individual. So um, it, you know, it wasn't a full income. It was maybe half an income that, that I was getting, uh, you know, between my work and, and the unemployment compensation, but it was incredibly helpful in uh, you know keeping me going, so I I I was very lucky in that respect because of timing um, and circumstances. So you know I realize not everybody is in that situation. Uh, not everybody has savings. So you know some people do end up um, taking out a loan at the beginning of their practice, and that can it can be very very stressful. Um, so um, I realized, you know, there are different circumstances that we have, and we also have different personalities. I also really believe that we, you know, we don't just have different money habits um, in terms of practical habits. We also have different money mindsets, and those can really condition very different types of behaviors. So, you know, not everybody grew up um, or has gone through their adult years um, you know, with experience budgeting. And when, when you start out as a practitioner, especially if it's your first time running a business, that can be incredibly challenging. I highly recommend um, that you get the book, The Total Money Makeover by Dave Ramsey, um, especially if you have never budgeted before. Um, but even if you have experience budgeting, I think it's an incredibly good book. Um, so um, anyway, I, I want to move forward by, you know, by sharing some of the things that work for me. I realized, you know, I, um, I started um, out by explaining I was, I was incredibly lucky in terms of having, you know, that buffer, that cushion of unemployment compensation that came in at the beginning when I was making, uh, you know, when I was, uh, when I, when my business was losing money, um, I was just making a small amount from consultations. I was building up my network. Um, I had, you know, I, I, I was very careful with my overhead, so I kept my overhead very low. Um, but nonetheless, you know, the, those first months are, are very challenging. So um, expect, if you don't have robust savings at the beginning, 
you know, you could expect the possibility of maybe needing to take out the loan. Um, you need to put a cap on it. You know, even, even I think it's a good, a, a good um, strategy to even talk to somebody, you know, a financial planner who can support you because these are not like do it yourself propositions. I think a lot of people just kind of think, okay, I can figure it out as I go. The less structured your plan is, the less solid it is, the, the less likely it is you're gonna have an amazing outcome. I, um, you know, I didn't need to go see a financial planner because I had a lot of experience budgeting going into this and I, I was in a very lucky set of circumstances. So um, otherwise I would have definitely gone seen someone it's, it's a really good investment um so you know some there there is just so much that people don't tell you i i already noted um that the struggle is secret you know you look at you follow people on instagram and it just looks like everybody's thriving and um and then you know all of a sudden you find out you know so and so closed their doors because they weren't you know they weren't making anything or they kept losing money or they were just not making enough to support their family or or to start a family and you know that's really sad because there are a lot of gifted practitioners out there who have so much to give not just in terms of their knowledge but also in terms of their passion and you know over time every every client that you see but this experience that you are building that is a gift a potential gift to everybody who could potentially come and see you in the course of your entire career so it's um, it's very unfortunate to see so many people cutting their careers short because of um, difficulty running the, you know, the practical and financial aspects of the practice. So um, I, I highly recommend, um, you know, addressing that as much from the get-go as you possibly can. If you're at the beginning, definitely, you know, um, take heed. <laughs> A lot of people are struggling. This is the first thing to keep in mind. Um, it is not all like, um, you know, happy um, prosperity from the get go for most people, uh, even though other people's social media feed may make it look that way. Um, and that's really unfortunate because it can leave you very, very isolated and feeling alone. Believe me, you are not alone. Um, I was really shocked when I, you know, when I learned, I think maybe three years into my practice that other people were deeply struggling. I thought it was just me. I thought I didn't have much know-how. I thought I maybe didn't take the right classes or, you know, read the right resources online or I don't know, read the right blogs. Not so. I actually was very much ahead of the game. My, you know, um, like I said, in my, in my first, uh, six months, five or six months, I, I, I worked at a loss. And then from there, every year I, I made, um, you know, I started making a profit. My, my first full year in practice, I made 9,800 something dollars that year in, in profit. Um, you know, all, my gross, a lot of that went into overhead. Uh, and that's just, you know, part of, of, the, of the reality of, of, of things uh, when you run a business. So um, some of the things that really helped me, um, trading services with people who needed what I had. So, you know, um, nutritional therapy. A lot of people need nutritional therapy, not everybody does. So don't, you know, don't bug people and pressure them uh, needlessly. If, if, you know, if you approach them and you offer a trade and they're not interested, that's totally okay. Um, Nonetheless, you know, I was very fortunate. I found an amazing web designer um, with logo design experience that I did a trade with at the beginning. And then, you know, when she no longer when she no longer needed my work, I kept working with her because she's fantastic. She's still my go-to person for all things uh, WordPress and logo related. Uh, so, um, lesson number one: uh, entertain the idea of doing a trade for services to keep your, you know, to get experience, exchange testimonials and keep your overhead really low. So helpful. Um, lesson number two, once you find someone great, keep them <laughs> literally, like don't just keep going from like web designer to web designer or, you know, um, if you find a great VA, stick with that VA. 
Um, so that is, is the first thing. And then the third thing is outsource. It's so important. You know, you won't be able to cover all your needs with trades, but identify all your needs and make sure that they are truly needed. Because sometimes we think that we need certain things that we actually don't. Um, you know, I was somehow led to believe um, during the course of my training that um, it was a good idea to have an LLC and to, you know, to do certain things, you know, like take expensive business courses. And um, I couldn't afford to do either of those things and I chose not to. And I was like, well, you know, let's see what happens if I don't do this. It was totally fine. <laughs> I, in some ways, um, and this was something that I thought at the outset, you know, I thought to myself, you know, maybe the fact that I can't afford to take a business class right now without taking a loan is actually going to be advantageous because um, I'm not taking the same class that all my peers are taking and I, I may actually end up, you know, with some more creative, unique strategies and that, that might give me an edge. Um, and it did in many ways. So there are some things that you will need help with and do not skimp on those. So for you, that may be a business class. For me, it wasn't, thank goodness. Um, gosh, I don't know if the business class I took in high school um, was enough. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe something stuck with me. I literally had no business experience before this, though. And uh, nobody in my family did either, as far as I know. <laughs> my dad was a poet. <laughs> my mom has always done various other things. So uh, I can't even say, oh, yeah, you know, it's in my blood. It's, it's not. Um, so anyway, um, another service that I found to be incredibly invaluable, and you may not need this, you know, I, I had a lot of experience budgeting and saving, but I did not have bookkeeping experience from a business perspective. So it was incredibly valuable to me to hire a bookkeeper. She did not need a trade, but I, you know, I found someone really, really good. And I'm still working with her seven years later. She set me up with QuickBooks. She taught me how to use it. She, she gave me lessons so that I could be as independent as possible. And she now just looks at my books twice a year and you know I'm always confident when Anne touches up my books everything's good uh, and I've gotten really good over time so it's it's a very affordable service for me but it keeps my practice running really smoothly and I personally think that for many people um, you know that just everything like tax and money like IRS related it can be stressful right um, sometimes people don't, you know, sometimes practitioners hold themselves back unconsciously um, because they're, you know, they play these mind games and, you know, what if I earn money, then, you know, I have to declare my earnings to the IRS. I don't know how to do that. And what if I have to pay a lot of taxes? Good grief. Get yourself set up from the beginning so that you are ready to make it, you know, so that you are earning ready. Um, and tax filing ready. You, you know how you need to keep your records. Um, everything's transparent. It's there. Like if you get audited tomorrow, you know what to do. It's stressful. Heck yes, it's stressful. But you, you know where to find your paperwork and you know what to send them and it's all good. Um, that, I think, is a really underestimated business success strategy that will, you know, and we're here because we want to help people on their healing journeys, but the reality is you are not going to be able to do that unless you have an incredible, um, you know, reserve of money or, um, you know, some other source of income on the side. You're not going to be able to support people um, in their healing journeys if you're not able to, to run a viable business. So this is really, really important. And one of the reasons why, I, you know, I never actually imagined that I would, that I would be uh, mentoring people on business related aspects, but I see such a need. And I struggled so much my first six months. I struggled a lot my first year. I struggled substantially my first three. After two years in practice, we had, we had an international move. We moved from the Bay Area to Italy. I went from having an in-person practice with an in-person network to having a remote practice um, with an online network that I had to build from scratch. Of course, my in-person network from the Bay Area covered over, it, it carried over to some extent because there, were, there are people you know, that I connected with, you know, former clients, um, colleagues that I, you know, that I collaborated with over the years who still deeply trust me because I, I supported them directly or I supported their patients. Um, 
so those relationships, you know, if you transition from an in-person practice to a distance practice, people are still going to send you referrals. Um, but it's different, you know, you, you living in a place where you're just doing online consultations um, is, is very, very different from having an in-person office. Some people are not going to want to work with a practitioner who doesn't have an in-person practice. Now today, in, you know, in, in the era of COVID um, and pandemics, everybody is having to transition to, to distance practice. So, you know, some of you, depending on you know, your location and your, and your model, you may be returning to an in-person practice or you may already be doing some kind of a hybrid model or you may have already transitioned back to an in-person practice. With you know, with the awareness that if, if there is a return of this um, of this pandemic, then you will be all of your skills that you acquired in terms of remote practice are still valid, and you can resurrect them at any time. So that's excellent. Um, so um, you know, really initially, just identify the basic needs. You may not even need a website. I prioritized having a website. It was important to me. Um, partly because of my assumptions and partly because I found a great person, like I said, who was willing to do a trade. We worked a lot on my logo, on my first logo. I don't know, retrospectively, you know, that was the best investment of our time. We just put so many hours in, into the trade just on a logo piece. It was a beautiful logo. It, it was only relevant for a couple of years. I didn't know when I opened my practice that, in two, that two years from then I would be somewhere completely different with a completely different business name and logo. It's okay. You know, th those are things that you learn over time. Um, and, you know, so, so don't do too much all at once. I really think that, you know, it's, it's very, very helpful at the beginning to identify the key investments you need to make to feel emotionally secure, um, practically confident, and, you know, legally protected. I think that's very important as well. Um, so make sure, you know, that, that you know your scope of practice, that you're following it, that if you have any insecurities whatsoever about um, any legal aspect of, your, of running your business and, um, and communicating with your clients and, and uh, maintaining records, hire a lawyer for a consultation. Um, it's, it's money so well spent because your peace of mind, you know, talking to a lawyer who can tell you what, you know, who can tell you how it is, who can tell you the implications, do this, don't do that. This is why, blah, blah, blah. It gives you so much peace of mind. It is like an incredible mindset reset, literally. And that frees up energy to serve your clients better. It removes a lot of hidden unconscious obstacles that may be stopping you from getting new clients and from keeping current clients uh, on board or from, you know, making recommendations of confidence. Um, because the more afraid you are, um, consciously or subconsciously, the less well you're going to perform, you know, on all fronts. Um, the less your practice is going to grow because you're going to hide. Um, so, you know, these things are really important. Um, get a mentor. Um, I, I picked, you know, when, when, um, when I chose an area that, that I wanted to specialize in, one of the trades I did was with somebody who had studied that specific area of practice that was absolutely priceless to me to be able to just kind of, you know, um, pick his brain and, uh, and get reading recommendations and, um, you know, to, to really get, um, to, to have a mentoring relationship with somebody who could really support me as I developed expertise and confidence in this area. So that was fantastic. You know, you won't always find a mentor who, who needs a trade. Um, in my case, I was really lucky that I did. And it wasn't, you know, necessarily, the, you know, I, I have several areas that I specialize in. So, you know, it could have just as well been somebody specializing in fertility as it so happened. My mentor was somebody who specialized in, um, mercury toxicity and mineral dysregulation, and that was totally up my alley. So that is still, to, to this day, one of the main uh, areas of my practice. Other areas, I sort of, you know, mentored myself through stuff, but as needed, you know, when, when I was uh, stuck with a new type of skill that I needed to refine, you know, sometimes you'll take an advanced training, but you aren't fully confident in, in, in 
implementing the, um, the knowledge. So you need somebody who can help you with the practical, uh, you know, who can really shadow you as you implement that into your own work with your clients. Uh, so that can be really priceless. I highly recommend doing that. Um, and you know, not just because this is a service I provide to colleagues, but also because it's something that I do, you know, as a practitioner, if I'm, if I'm learning something new, I get mentoring on it. That's really, really helpful for me um, because I, I have a lot of confidence um, that I'm on the right track and I get to learn, um, you know, from the insights of someone seasoned in whatever it is that I'm implementing. So um, these are just, you know, little nuggets of, um, of information that I'm, you know, that I'm really delighted to share with you from uh, my perspective. Um, and I would love to, um, you know, if, if you are a practitioner struggling to build your practice or to grow your practice or worried that you may not be able to keep your doors open, I would love to help you. I think that the world needs uh, gifted practitioners who can really listen to their clients and help them along their healing journeys from a functional perspective. Um, and um, this is one of the reasons why I'm, I'm really, you know, one of the areas that I'm working with is supporting other practitioners um, through the practical aspects of, of running a business. So currently I have, um, I have a little mentoring group called, to, um, fa called Foundations in Practice. Um, and it's a, it's a little four week program and, and we, we, uh, every week we go through a specific area. So, um, you know, we, we practice skills, um, and, um, and, um, the participants get homework every week and we, we check in, uh, on the success of meeting to go over the homework and it's incredibly helpful. And every week it's amazing. I mean, people build confidence and, and they have results. Um, you know, they say, oh, wow, you know, I got two new clients or, um, you know, I, I, I did, I took this step and I'm so proud of myself. It's been my to-do list for, you know, goodness knows how long. So that is beautiful. Um, so please, you know, if you're interested in uh, foundations and practice, I'm, um, I'm sure I will be running another group at some point. Uh, I'm also starting a brand new um, group program, which is, um, it is uh, a case studies group um, that, that will also integrate, um, it, it integrates case studies and troubleshooting through practical networking and kind of, you know, back office management, just the flow of your practice. And the, the name of the group is Tools for Your Practice. And I'm, um, I'm going to be opening the doors to applications for this group soon. Now, one of the things that I really wanted to do in launching this group is to make it affordable uh, to everyone. So the first run of this group, the, the original people who signed up are going to be um, grandfathered into an amazing $75 a month subscription price as long as they remain active. Um, you know, you, you commit to a, a three month initial, uh, commitment and then you can, you know, you can choose whether to continue or not and, and you keep that, uh, as a lifetime subscription, monthly subscription fee, you know, as long as you remain actively enrolled. And this is going to be an amazing group because every two weeks we're going to talk about, we're going to be, you know, just delving into case studies, um, anonymously and you know confidentially of course everything you know all all identi potentially identifying information is going to be completely removed so um participants are going to have uh the chance to take turns presenting their case studies um and for sessions when you know when nobody has something to present i, I have a ton of stuff to bring to the table and we will also be doing you know uh marketing and, and networking and kind of you know back out this practical stuff so um, that is incredibly exciting, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to implementing this uh, this summer. I'm, I'm actually you know, uh, launching this in, um, in late June, so I'm, I'm very excited. And I hope that if you're interested that you will reach out to me with questions um, and um, you know, um, 
let me know if you want if you want me to send information um, you can reach out to me through my website at build nurturerestore.com that is build nurturerestore.com you can email me through my website um, or you know you can also find me on uh, on social media um, at, at um, Sarah Russell NTP um, either on Facebook or Instagram uh, I am on Twitter but I literally am I'm not on Twitter because I haven't logged in for like forever um, it's just like it's too much social media for me. Um, and I, I have a VA, by the way. Uh, I, I also have a Pinterest account, which I haven't used for a really long time. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I focus um, on, you know, what, uh, what is giving me a return on my time investment. So I'm not getting overwhelmed. And so I'm not spending too much on my VA work. It's all very targeted and very goal oriented. And this is part of, you know, what makes me, um, you know, a, a, a good practitioner, both from the business perspective and from the client management perspective. I, I know how to integrate things. Um, I know a lot of it has been learned through trial and error. So I'm happy to share my knowledge, my experience, my resources with you, and just to help you build confidence and skills and, and, um, and success because um, you know we're all here to serve people and help them in their healing journeys. Um, so it's, it's such a gift to the world to form a community and to help each other and hold each other up and by holding each other up to really hold up all the people that we collectively serve. And I think that is just really what we are called to do. Um, so please get in touch. If you have any questions, I'm happy to talk to you more. Uh, make sure that you're following me on Facebook and Instagram because I will be posting um, announcements and information about um, my mentoring program. So uh, again, follow me at Sarah Russell NTP. Sarah with no H and H-less, although maybe not H-less. Um, and um, yeah, get in touch, you know, message me if you have any questions and, or email me, I, I'm happy to, uh, to talk. So thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And uh, I really appreciate your taking the time to watch this. Thanks, bye.